And I remember when I was younger, I found this difficult and challenging. I found it quite boring, praying the rosary. When I found myself starting seminary, Our Lady had a much bigger role in my life. Hello, my name is Joseph Gulliford. I'm from the southeast of London in Southwark Diocese. I'm grateful to Mother Mary because it was my parents. Before they got married, they both went to Medjugorje and it was Mother Mary really who had a huge influence in them receiving this word to get married. I grew up in a very committed a Catholic family and we had a strong devotion to Our Lady and we would pray the rosary regularly. And I remember when I was younger I found this difficult and challenging. I found it quite boring praying the rosary and I preferred if we had other prayers. It was during those years of being a, a child that in praying the rosary there was a, a real grace, there was a real peace and I always felt like Mary was there in some way. We had these pictures of the Immaculate Heart of Mary in our house and the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the unity between the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus being so united in heart. That was something that struck me when I was younger. But if I was to pick out a time where I felt I really started to grow in more awareness and grow in love for Our Lady. When I was in my later teens, I did start to pray more regularly in, in specific ways and I was going to Mass regularly. But the place of, of Our Lady in my life wasn't so strong. At least, at least I didn't feel like I really knew her. I experienced her, experienced her through images through icons and pictures and stories, but I didn't feel like I really knew Mary in a personal way. Like I didn't feel like I had a personal relationship with her. As I said before, in praying the rosary with my family from a young age, there was definitely a deeper reality. In many ways, Mary has always been there for me, but it wasn't something conscious to me when I was in my later teens. It was only when I started to discern my vocation more seriously and that was going into my early 20s when Our Lady started to come back into my life in a bigger way. I would still pray the rosary but not, not so frequently. But when this idea of priesthood emerged for me, I, ha I had a very topsy-turvy time of one minute feeling called to the priesthood and then doubting it the next. And I entered, it, entered into a very, um, to, to a, fa a fairly serious relationship with my girl, girlfriend at the time. But surrounding that, and this was when I was at, towards, this is when I was towards the end of my time at university, surrounding that was an opportunity to go to Medjugorje. And I had this booked into my calendar and I was just exploring and I was excited about this new relationship. But um, in going to Medjugorje, there was, I was blown away by a profound peace in the, in the atmosphere. And people started, started to say to me about um, thinking about the priesthood. And I, I had, a, I had a, almost like a instinctive sort of resistance to that um, because I wanted to, I didn't want to follow that at that point in time. But I felt that Our Lady's presence in Medjugorje was encouraging me to be open to priesthood. And it was later down the line when that particular relationship with my girlfriend at the time did, didn't work out in the end. And it was, I suppose, this ongoing 
sense of being called to priesthood that that prevailed. And then when I found myself starting seminary, Our Lady had a much bigger role in my life. I felt like I could turn to her for support. Before in the past, I had continued to pray the rosary now and again, but I hadn't really leaned on Our Lady in a personal way. Our Lady of Consolation, the icon, there was one in seminary in Our Lady's chapel. And it was by the, um, this altar that was dedicated to Our Lady, Queen of the Clergy. And uh, many times I used to go there and pray and ask for Our Lady's intercession. But I found myself actually leaning upon that icon. I found myself leaning upon our mother and in, in difficult moments looking for her, her help, her intercession and her consolation. And I really felt like up until that point in my life, I found it difficult to accept Mother Mary as Queen, Queen of Heaven. When, whenever I'd seen, you know, pictures of her or I'd seen um, devotions that were very um, strong in terms of her queenship, I found that difficult to to access, to become something that was that that, that, that was real for me. I, I found it difficult to relate to, but it was through the, the tenderness of Our Lady that I felt I really came to know her more in a personal way. And as I said, just in that simple leaning upon her in those moments of struggle, you know, with academia, with um, various personal human challenges in the, in, in, in the seminary, seminary life. But then, at, my, at the end of my second year of seminary, I particularly struggled with persevering in my vocation. And I started to have many, many doubts. And at that time, my brother, my younger brother became very unwell. And he was in hospital when he had to have surgery. And it was a very anxious time for my family. And I remember, thank God, he, he, he did start to get better. And I went to 
Medjugorje again and I went with my mother and I really felt like just packing it all in. I felt like I wanted to go in a different direction, to go and, you know, perhaps discern something different, go and get married, go and sort of change the course. But I felt that at that point, Our Lady really spoke to me and really shielded me from the arrows of confusion and from seeking a different path from what God was calling me to do. And if you've been to Medjugorje, you'll know that there is a, a mountain, it's called Cross Mountain, and it's a very powerful place to walk up. There's stations of the cross as you walk up. And I walked up there with my mother and when we reached the top, it was the time of day where Our Lady appears to the visionaries. It was, the, it was that particular point of day. I think, it, I think it's a quarter to five in the evening. And in that moment, I stopped and I, I knelt and I prayed. And I, was just, I just asked Mother Mary to pray for me. And I asked her to give me some kind of direction, some kind of support, some kind of help. And I felt her say in my heart, without seeing her with my eyes, I just had a sense that she was there in that moment on that mountain. And I said to her, what is it that God is asking of me? Because I find it so difficult. I'm finding it so difficult to persevere. I'm finding that there are so many challenges, overwhelming things to think about in terms of my vocation and my life and what's going on with my brother. And she said to me, God is asking me to love and to be faithful. These two things. And it was the simplicity of those words that, that touched me. Jumping a year ahead after that, I returned to Medjugorje with a few friends from seminary a few seminarians, and we had this incredible opportunity to experience uh, one of the apparitions to one of the visionaries there. And so we went to um, the visionary, Ivan, and we went to his, his chapel, and there were people sitting around us, and we had prayers of preparation. And we were building up, praying the rosary, building up to the time where Our Lady was going to appear. And in the moment where she appeared, without seeing anything physically with my, with my eyes, I just entered into that peace and just became aware of that she was present. And one thing that really struck me was the smell of roses. I received this smell of red roses in particular. And I remember asking my friends afterwards, oh, did you, did you smell that? Did you get that same smell? And they said, no, I didn't, didn't pick up anything. And so I felt that was a real sign from Our Lady to me that, that she was there and, that, and it was just um, a very consoling sign of her sweetness. But also in the moment of the apparition, again, I, I asked Our Lady just to confirm to me because yet again, <laughs> I was having a few doubts about my vocation again. And I just wanted to have some kind of confirmation. And I, and I asked her, you know, you know, what can you can you ask God? What is my vocation? What is he What is he calling me to do? And she said to me that God is calling me to be a priest, but it is my choice. I've now become a deacon, and I have one one more year to go before becoming a priest. And Our Lady has had a huge role in supporting me and praying for me, in confirming my vocation to me. And I eagerly desire to, to grow and grow in my relationship with our mother.
two years ago, I was, I had the opportunity to a consecration, a 30 day uh, consecration to Our Lady. And um, I was a bit nervous and tentative about doing it. I think it was because I, the idea of, of really entrusting myself completely to our mother, it seemed like a bit of a, bit of a scary thing but I can't describe the great peace that came when I, when, I, when, I, when I did make it, when I went through the prayers day after day. And I just understood more and more how amazing Our Lady is and, and her place in the church and how united she is to the Holy Spirit. We, we, you know, we talk about Our Lady as being spouse of the Spirit. And it was Saint Maximilian Kolbe who called, uh, called, uh, called Mother Mary the Immaculata. And as we know from the, her, her appearance in, 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 in Lourdes and um, this doctrine in the church that of her Immaculate Conception, and Our Lady said, I am the Immaculate Conception. And it's that closeness to the Spirit um, when the Spirit overshadowed her. And I felt like when I made this consecration, Our Lady really overshadowed me in her mantle and has been looking after me in a new, in ways I could never imagine. I just feel her presence with me. I feel that she's with me all the time, praying for me, looking after me. And there's such a great peace and joy that I have knowing that she's there. My granny used to always ask Our Lady for a parking space when she was, you know, she was looking for one and couldn't find one. There's a, you know, that, there's a little prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace, please find me a parking space. Um, but <laughs> um, she would always find one when she, when she asked Our Lady. And that's something that I've taken on board myself in my own life. And Our Lady doesn't, doesn't let us down, you know. I just want to share that before my ordination to the diaconate, the day before, I felt very, very nervous. I felt overwhelmed, a bit panicky, a bit anxious. And I remember just going to that same place I've talked about in the seminary chapel to Our Lady's altar and to this icon of Our Lady of Consolation. And I just felt Our Lady saying to me that, that she was with me that she would, would be with me through all of it and she was looking after me. I was, able, I was able just to, in that moment, let go of, of many fears, let go of many anxieties or, and stress. And I was just consoled and filled with, with, with a great peace. I really felt that Our Lady was just, was just holding me. I've always found with our mother that she never imposes herself she never makes demands of us that we can't do, we can't handle. She speaks to us in truth and loves us. And she's always there when, when we need her. And I've just found increasingly that I can rely upon her in prayer. I can go to her when I'm in need. And that she brings a real a peace through her prayers, through her presence. That's like nothing else. And because she always brings us to Jesus, she always points to her son. She always brings, her, brings us through her immaculate heart to his sacred heart. My name is Michael O'Neill and the Miracle Hunter. We're looking at the miraculous icons of the Virgin Mary from all around the world. A famous one from Croatia, mother of Bistrica, is one of these black Madonnas that are seen all throughout all of Europe. In this case, in, it was made around 1400, but it was buried for safekeeping in protection from the Turks. But in 1525, a supernatural light shone upon that spot and they rediscovered where it was buried. In 1588, they had to bury it in the walls again. And in 1684, it was discovered another time. In 1930, this was, she was declared the mother of Croatia and became known as one of the most famous Marian icons in all of Christian history.
problems, worries, sadness, are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear.